Coming up on today's show, Rivian completes its latest funding round with more than 2.5 billion US dollars to show for it. Tesla scores approval for tax breaks for its Austin Terra factory, and a Daimler shareholder calls the Mercedes-Benz EQC boring in a blistering attack on the company's attitude to electric vehicles. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another episode of Transport Evolved News. I'm back refreshed after a week off, and as some of you have noted, we've now got a new studio for the daily videos. But we're here for the Saturday Roundup show, so let's get on with it. Thanks to the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship of today's show. Find out how to join them and accelerate the switch to electric today by going to electricauto.org. And if you want to win a Tesla courtesy of the sixth annual CCF raffle, make sure you stick around until the end of the show and I'll show you how you can do just that. The auto industry may be feeling the pain of the global pandemic right now, but that hasn't stopped Rivian from successfully closing its latest funding round this week. According to an announcement made on Friday, Rivian, which has to date enjoyed investment from Amazon and Ford, has now managed to secure the interest of investment company T. Rowe Price Associates, a long-term investor in Tesla from its early days until last year when it sold most of its shares. T. Rowe Price was joined in this round by Barron Capital, Amazon, BlackRock, Couture and Soros Fund Management LLC, with the investment totaling an eye-watering $2.5 billion. This makes it not only the largest investment round for Rivian to date, but it really shows how seriously the investment world is taking the company's future prospects. According to many headlines online this week, Tesla is readying full autonomous vehicle operation for rollout by the end of this year. A long-term goal of Tesla, Level 5 autonomy relates to vehicles which can operate with zero human interaction and actually no longer need any kind of traditional driving controls. Yet, as usual, context is king, because the headlines came from a video message Elon Musk sent to Shanghai's annual World Artificial Intelligence Conference, in which he said, quote, I'm extremely confident that level five, or essentially complete autonomy, will happen, and I think it will happen very quickly. I remain confident that we will have the basic functionality for level five autonomy complete this year. Of course, the qualifier at the end basic functionality suggests that there may be a little more work to be done than some headlines would make you believe, not to mention legislative hurdles that Tesla needs to get through. Audi has been known for teasing automotive world concepts for many years, and sometimes those vehicles do ultimately enter into production. This week, we saw a new one in the form of the Audi Q4 e-tron Sportback concept, a Sportback variant of the Q4 e-tron it debuted last year. Following the same design language as the e-tron, the Q4 e-tron Sportback concept uses the same MEB-based drivetrain and underpiddings as its sibling, and features an 82 kilowatt hour pack and 225 kilowatts of all-wheel drivetrain. It's expected to enter into production in 2021 as a coupe alternative to the already committed production version of the Q4 SUV. It's not clear yet which markets will get it, but as an SUV, I'd say it's going to be a fairly widely available model. A strange video popped up on YouTube this week, which appears to show a heavily modified, heavily stripped down version of the Ford Mustang Mark E shredding tires at a top secret test track somewhere in the US. It's shown pulling donuts and putting on quite a spectacle, all watched by an anonymous videographer hiding in some nearby bushes, who then posted his video to a brand new YouTube account as Carolina Guy. But it's most likely a PR stunt by someone rather than a real spy shot vid. Why do I think this? Well, first, it's clearly been filmed at the North Carolina Center for Automotive Research, a place you don't just get to sneak into. Second, there are points in the video at which the car's driver seems to look directly at the camera. It's all a bit fishy, and if I had to guess, it's a viral marketing campaign for either Ken Block or Von Gitten Jr. Tesla has officially gained the necessary permission from the Del Valle Independent School District in Austin, Texas, to pay a heavily reduced property tax for a proposed 
four to five million square foot factory located within the school district boundaries. That factory is already nicknamed the Tesla Terra Factory and is expected to employ around 5,000 people when construction has finished. It's located right next to Texas State Highway 130. While Tesla does still have some negotiating to do before the factory itself is confirmed, this approval equates to around $50 million worth of abatements that make it far more likely that Tesla will proceed with the factory project. As far as I'm aware, Tesla is still in negotiations with local and state government about further incentive packages before final commitments are made. BMW has officially confirmed that the production debut of its iX3 electric SUV will take place online next week. We first saw the iX3 a few years ago as a concept at the Shanghai Auto Show. But over the last few weeks, BMW has been trickle-feeding us details of the Chinese production line where the iX3 will be made. Next week's official debut will showcase the final design of the iX3 and confirm pricing and specifications. Of the latter, we know there's going to include a 74 kilowatt hour battery pack. Sadly, however, if you're in the US, I should probably remind you at this point that despite original plans to bring the iX3 to North America, BMW has since decided that won't happen. Sorry. Toyota is blaming what it says are battery supply issues for extremely limited numbers of RAV4 Prime plug-in hybrids being made available to buyers in North America. As recently as last month, Toyota had said that it would be targeting a total of 20,000 Toyota RAV4 Primes for sale in the US per year, with initial launch market figures for this year closer to around 5,000 examples. Yet actual availability is now being described as limited across the US, with dealerships already taking advantage of the situation and adding as much as $10,000 on top of the car's advertised MSRP. Or in other words, Toyota dealers are making the limited range RAV4 Prime more expensive than the entry-level Tesla Model Y. Yeah, no. Mercedes-Benz may be one of the companies attempting to electrify its vehicle lineup and stem share losses of more than 24% this year. But this week, one of its shareholders directly attacked the firm for making the EQC boring and dull. Delivering prepared remarks this week, Ingo Speak, head of sustainability and corporate governance at Decker Investment, criticized the way in which Mercedes-Benz and parent company Daimler have approached the electric car market. Noting that Tesla sells around 10 times the number of electric cars that Daimler does in Germany, Decker's official opinion is that Mercedes-Benz and its EQC was, quote, too late, too expensive and too boring. Decca owns around one half percent of Daimler. General Motors confirmed this week that it's killing the Chevrolet Sonic, its entry-level subcompact that's been available as both a hatchback and a sedan. It's the latest model to be given the heave-ho by GM as the brand slims down its offerings, making the Chevy Malibu the only internal combustion engine sedan left. Why are we reporting on it on this channel, I hear you ask? Well, that's because the Chevrolet Sonic is produced at the General Motors Orin Township Production Facility, right alongside the Chevrolet Bolt TV, and the Sonic was the last internal combustion engine model to be made there. General Motors has confirmed that the Sonic will be replaced on the production line by an electric model, most likely the Chevrolet Bolt EUV, which we're expecting to launch next year, and which of course shares much of the Bolt EV's underpinnings. So watch this space. And now it's time for Short Shorts. Fisker Inc. announced on Thursday that it's hired several new executives, including a new CTO in the form of Burkhard Hunker and communications advisor Simon Sprawl. In addition, it's confirmed a successful completion of a $50 million Series C funding round. Tesla's stock has continued to rise this week, buoyed by better than expected second quarter figures, and that's pushed Tesla's stock value above that of both ExxonMobil and Disney in the last two weeks. As a consequence, it's expected Tesla will soon join the S&P 500. Lucid has announced that it will be opening a total of 20 sales and service locations across the US by the end of next year. Called Lucid Studios, they will pretty much mirror what Tesla has already managed with its Tesla stores, but instead, of course, for Lucid.
Tesla has obtained a new series of patents for a new anode-free battery cell design that does away with traditional anodes in preference for oversupplying lithium at the cathode at a point of manufacture. It's a very clever design, and yes, I am hoping to make a video on it. Taiwanese firm Kimco has officially confirmed that its Revenex electric motorcycle, which debuted as a concept last year, will enter into production. The production version looks extremely similar to the original concept and should hit the market next year. Nissan has officially confirmed that its Aria electric SUV will launch next week via an online reveal event. Originally showcased as a concept vehicle, the Aria is expected to be a higher performance and longer-legged version of electric vehicles when compared to the Leaf, although it will also have a much higher price tag. BMW has signed a 100 million euro contract with Moroccan mining company in Marrakesh to supply it with cobalt for use in electric vehicle batteries for the next five years. The deal is worth one sixth of BMW's total needs, with the rest coming from Australia, meaning that BMW has completely cut out all DRC sourced cobalt from its supply chain. Nissan Australia has partnered up with various utility companies and energy partners to launch a brand new vehicle to grid project in the country. Ahead of a public trial, a total of 51 LEAFs will be used as part of a VHD project in collaboration with the Australian government. Tesla owners in Norway are being asked by local police to assist them in solving an attempted murder case in Sandalfjord near Oslo. According to official reports, someone tried to burn down the mayor of the town's home, and people are asking Tesla owners if their cars caught any suspicious activity through the sentry mode feature. According to documents released by the US federal government this week, several troubled EV startups applied for PPP funds under the CARES Act as a consequence of coronavirus. These include Faraday Future, Byton, NIO and others. All are still struggling in some way to bring models to the US market. A new 400 kilowatt CCS rapid charger has debuted in Europe. Made by Infineon, the charging station is the most powerful CCS rapid charger made and makes use of liquid-cooled cables to deliver such an incredibly high rate of charge. Jaguar Land Rover is embarking on a new hydrogen fuel cell project codenamed Project Zeus in order to develop a hydrogen fuel cell drivetrain for use in future full-size SUVs. The programme is partly funded by the UK government. Seat's luxury brand Cupra has unveiled its Elborn electric hatchback this week. Based on the Volkswagen ID3, it is essentially the same vehicle underneath, but it's differentiated from its German cousin with some interior and exterior tweaks. Frankly, I really like that look. SK Innovation has officially started work on its second massive lithium-ion production facility in the US state of Georgia. When the facility is completed, it will supply lithium-ion battery cells to both Volkswagen and Ford for use in their respective US market electric vehicles. British Gas has added 1,000 all-electric Vauxhall Vivaro e-vans to its fleet this week. The vans will be used by engineers travelling to customer locations throughout the UK. Despite its name, British Gas is now both a supplier of natural gas and an electricity company. Honda and Cattle have signed an agreement that will see the latter provide the former with lithium-ion batteries for use in future electrified vehicles. The agreement will also see both firms work together on brand new cell development, cell recycling and second life battery projects. It's official. Electric bicycles are safer than those without electric assist. At least, that's according to BikeMo, a specialist cycling insurer in the UK, which says that e-bike riders are a 38% lower risk than those with non-assisted bicycles. A new study from UC Davis in California says that electric vehicles used in ride-sharing programs like Uber or Lyft have three times the environmental benefits than a privately owned electric vehicle. This study shows how important it is to electrify rideshare and public transit. It happened. After threatening to do it, Tesla finally made short shorts available to fans throughout its online apparel store, and they sold out almost immediately. Each pair of Tesla red short shorts with S3XY on the derriere was sold for just shy of 70 bucks each. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week.
Tesla has just rolled out a new software update that adds a much needed safety feature to all Teslas with autopilot hardware, a side view camera feed. Now owners can opt to not only see the rear camera feed, but also the side view feeds too, which nicely covers blind spots. In a response from a follower on Twitter who asked if Tesla could activate the camera feeds automatically when activating turn signals, Elon Musk seems to suggest that Tesla will add the feature in a future update. While blind spot camera feeds aren't that common in many markets around the world, they are pretty common on Japanese market cars. And frankly, I love the feature as it ensures you're not going to sideswipe someone changing lanes or hit a bicycle when you're turning the corner. Thumbs up for me and thanks to our viewer Jason Rogers for snapping the feature in use. I'm really grateful. And finally, Zero Motorcycles is without doubt one of the best electric motorcycle brands out there. And my fantasy motorcycle garage includes both the SRF and a Zero DSR. Sadly though, they are a little too pricey for me on my own budget right now, but if you're a more ready position to buy and happen to own an internal combustion engine motorcycle, then I have some fantastic news for you. As part of a campaign to get people on electric motorbikes, Zero is offering customers up to $1,500 or equivalent of the price of a brand new Zero SRS or Zero SRF if they trade in their gas bikes. Tie this in with any local incentives available to you and it could put both of these high performance electric rides within reach. I've not ridden the SRS yet, but I have ridden the SRF and having ridden that, I can tell you it is most certainly well worth a look. And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship of today's show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us all making the switch to clean green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, where to attend local monthly meetups, or find EV owners to talk about your own journey towards electric by going to electricauto.org. And if you'd like to win a Tesla of your choice or $50,000 in cash, make sure you pay attention now because I'm about to tell you about the sixth annual Tesla raffle from the Chicago Chesed Fund. The Chicago Chesed Fund is a non-profit organization based in Chicago, dedicated to helping families in crisis and has more than 40 programs and services currently in operation. In a world where COVID-19 is ravaging entire communities, its work has never been more important, and throughout this year, the charity has been helping people stay safe, ensure they have food to eat, they have jobs, and that, most importantly, they are healthy. To find out more about the program or to buy tickets, head to ccfraffle.com, where you can get two tickets for $175 by using the promo code Transport Evolved at checkout. There's a total of 5,555 tickets available, and the draw takes place on Labor Day. So if you're feeling lucky and you've got some spare cash, grab your tickets today. I would love it if you would like, comment and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you do feel able, please consider supporting us by using one of the three links below. And if you can't give us any financial support, know that just watching and interacting with our content really does help those algorithms. And that means we get more people watching our content. So if you do all of those things, Thank you. Thanks also to those who contribute to the channel in whatever way they can, because it is really wonderful to know that we can continue to make great content because of your fantastic support. And this week it's meant that we've been able to buy some more hard drives to store all of our content. I'll be back next week with more for you to enjoy, but in the meantime, stay healthy, work to make the world a fairer, safer place for us all to live, strive for equality, be kind to one another, and remember to wash your hands. Keep evolving.